हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माय सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता योर माइंड ऑफ अ करंट अफेयर्स सो लेट्स बिगिन टुडेस वीडियो वेयर आई हैव अ लॉट ऑफ इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग्स टू डिस्कस विद यू बट बिफोर दैट आई विल इन्फॉर्म यू दैट दिस इज द गाइस टाइम टेबल फॉर द लाइव कोर्सेज ऑफ आर बी एस एबी एन अबार्ट सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एनरोल योर सेल्फ इन दीज कोर्सेज और नो मोर अबाउट दीज कोर्सेज यू कैन डू सो ऑन आर एप्लीकेशन प्लस यू कैन कॉल अस मेल अस or you can know more about us on our website plus there is discussions.anujindal.in uh, forum as well that's a website where you can post your queries by creating your email id and one more information is that guys the pdf of this session is available on the telegram channel the link of the channel is in description below pause the video download the pdf keep it beside you and then learn what i'm teaching you so on that note let's begin with the first question so how many countries have joined the interpols International Child Sexual Exploitation Database as of July 11, 2022. So here the right answer is 68. The latest member, that is the 68th member to join this database, is none other than India. So by joining this database, basically India has got the opportunity to get access to the database of child exploitation you all know that interpol is the international police headquartered in lyon france okay so it provides the training it provides the database uh, to the member countries regarding different crimes regarding different capabilities okay so that is the basic idea behind it don't go into too much of its depth yes but one factual information that i want to extract from all of you is who is the present head of interpol tell me in the comment section the next question is where is isro system for safe and sustainable space operations and management established so basically guys it is a kind of laboratory you can say or observatory basically it's not a laboratory neither it is an observatory it is a facility that has been launched at bangalore in order to prevent our space assets like the satellites that are orbiting earth from colliding with other space uh, material like debris or other satellites so that is the basic idea behind this facility which is located at bangalore okay it is a part of sp uh, space situational awareness program okay and i hope that from the name itself you can decipher the basic objective of this program that is to protect our assets in the space as well as to be more aware about the situations in the space therefore the space situational awareness program also helps in monitoring the space okay the uh, the orbit of the earth moving ahead i have already told you that it is going to prevent the collision of india's satellite assets with other objects in the space one more and most important information here is that similar to this facility we have one more facility that is called netra so netra stands for network for for space object tracking and analysis so what does this center do this is guys a space situation awareness control center so it performs a similar function to the uh, previous facility that we have just read now okay so it is a hub of all ssa activities within india and it was set up at the campus of isro telemetry tracking and command network in pune bangalore and this is also we have read in the uh, in the past because it was not a very old news it was there in the news last year i guess uh, a year previous prior to that so we have already uh, heard about it so i hope that it will help you in memorizing this fact better that we have netra and now we have one more facility both at bangalore where isro is located essentially okay the third question is which state has become the first state in india to launch an exclusive research and development policy so here karnataka guys is the right answer no nothing much is there to be learned from this news it's just a simple policy that a state has launched but remember that it is the first state in india to launch the r&d policy moving ahead which states in industry accelerator is running the elevate program so here the right answer is again karnataka now what is the news exactly 
the news is not about elevate program directly indirectly although it is related but directly the news is that the karnataka digital economy mission has partnered with state bank of india to support the startups by giving them loans okay so who is going to provide the loans uh, state bank of india that is sbi and the maximum amount of loan that sbi would give to the startups in the state of karnataka is limited to 2 crores okay so these are three uh, facts that i have underlined here that you need to remember and remember and it is a very basic fact that the facility will be provided uh, the amount will be provided for their seed level needs okay uh, then guys we have the assistance that will be provided under the credit guarantee fund trust for micro and small enterprises so central government scheme i hope that you have covered it thoroughly uh, scheme uh, was launched in the pandemic duration to loans to the startups to the msmes at basically on the guarantee of the central government that is the basic idea of this scheme uh, guys please cover this scheme thoroughly from your exam point of view who can expect a question out of it your upcoming abad exam okay the loans that will be provided to startups the loans uh, basically will be provided only to the startups that are recognized by the karnataka digital economy elevate program this is the program and the startups will be selected under this program the next question is there was nat natural farming conclave organized so it was organized at sir and again there is nothing to discuss here it's just that prime minister attended it by a video conference and there he told the farmers to adopt natural one more interesting fact that can be asked in the examination is that in the list maharashtra harsh palekar i hope you must have heard his name earlier as well harsh palekar is the one who has introduced the zero budgeting and the abad aspirant out there guys this is an important topic for all of you i have also covered it zero budgeting natural farming and i hope that you know about it and if you don't then it is your responsibility to cover the zero budgeting natural farming that harsh palekar has introduced from your ard point okay the next question is where will iib establish its interim operational hub so it is going to be established at abu dhabi in so remember it is going to be iib first over office bank is headquartered in and it is going to open its another office in abu dhabi now guys we are on our next question uh which is which of the following statements are true about the sustainable development goals for 2022 so first of all this is a un report so you have three statements first is 100 million acres of forest are destroyed every 50 million metric tons of plastic entered the oceans in 2021 energy related co2 emissions in 6% only a and b only a b and c so which one is correct state so here the correct said let's see have in really in 2020 the energy to to me have reached their peak okay it was the highest energy let's move into the report itself which is a very important report again both the faces uh person i have already told you that this report has been But let's directly delve into the report. Let me first tell you that it is the Sustainable Development Goals report. So basically, it tracks the development or the progress in uh, progress by the countries towards achieving the SDG goals. Okay, so obviously progress on every goal was given. We have seven goals, and for each and goal, the progress was given. But I have selected only important ones. Which Uh, in my opinion can be asked in the examination okay, so we can restrict ourselves to that much and only so the very first sdg is poverty sdg 1 so what does this report highlight it 
is that due to the rising and Russia Ukraine war, the additional 25 million, 95 million people will be living in extreme poverty. In an additional 93 million people worldwide were pushed into extreme poverty because of the pandemic. So these are two statements. Forecast for 2020 because it highlights the forecast for 20. Estimate that 75 million people, more people than expected prior to the pandemic living in. Again, a very important and 75 million people is a huge amount, a huge number of people. Global poverty rate has increased from 8.3. The first rise in eight and the largest since 1990. Okay, so do remember that the global poverty rate has reached 9.2 percent in 22 due to the pandemic. Now it is also being aggravated by the Russian war. Next SDG is to end. Obviously, poverty is rising. Extreme poverty is rising. How can the people be uh, left out from the hunger situation. So here we have one in ten people suffering from hunger. Then we have nearly one in three who are lacking access to the adequate food. Again, an important statement at the same time, a really gross truth of the but this is the truth that out of the three people, one is lacking the access to adequate food, and out of ten people, Always there would be a one person who lacking. That is the 47 countries were affected by the rising prices of 2020 as compared to the car price. So 15% to 47%. So this is, uh, I would say, an aggravated situation due to the COVID pandemic. Now, with the Russia Ukraine war, with the uh, shortage, the wheat supply, and many. Obviously, the entire international market is in. Let's see what happens. People are suffering this, uh, I would say, this problem. This Russia crisis flooded food. It's poorest. Okay, so we have this. Ukraine by global export. 30% of wheat, much is the contribution of both Russia and Ukraine in the international wheat market. 20% of maize. Then we have 80% of our seed products. Obviously, we are going to lead to a great shortage. Then we have 149.2 million children under the age of 5 who are suffering from hunting in 20 the global data. To reduce stunting in children by 50 by 2029 must double from 2.1 percent per year. So this is the suggestion or the warning that this report has given. I hope that all of you know stunting refers to the lack of weight in comparison to the uh, lack of height in comparison to the shortage of. Then we have SDG 13 about climate action, so it states that energy related CO2, that is the CO2 created due to the generation of power, increased by 6% in 2021 and this is the highest level that it reached. And here we have this important says that climate finance falls short of $100 billion yearly commitment, okay. And developed countries provided only $79.6 billion in climate finance in 2019. So, we did finance that the developed countries are not providing and channelizing. So, here we have SDG, life below water. So, here we are basically talking about the oceans. 70 plus million metric tons of plastic entered into the 20 double or maybe triple by 2040. Again, a very, I would say, dangerous situation. Then we have the most important part for the agriculture students because it talks about the life on land. That is, uh, basically, it talks about agriculture 
and related activities. So, 10 million hectares of forest are destroyed every year. Almost 90% of global deforestation is agricultural expansion. This is an important statement. You can cite this statement if you encounter a question related to sustainable agriculture or uh, related ecology and agriculture. There you can cite this report, this statement, and vindicate how can you use sustainable practices to uh, counter this situation. Then we have 40,000 which are documented to some extent in the coming days. 130 parties have already ratified the uh, Nagoya protocol. The word is not mentioned, but it is Nagoya protocol, uh, which has been signed by 133 countries and basically the Nagoya protocol is for the ubiquitous use of genetic resources or democratizing the use of genetic That was all guys about the report. 90% forest land is degraded due to agriculture and out 90% 49.6% is uh, plant expansion. 8.5% livestock grazing. Guys, that was all about the report. I hope that you have understood the report well. In case there is anything that you did not understand or clarification on, you can ask me. Okay. So the next question is, uh, with which bank was Women's World Banking partnered for uh, with which bank has Women's World Banking partnered for boosting the economic empowerment of women in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand? So here, guys, Bank of Baroda is the right answer. Now, Bank of Baroda and this Women's World Banking, both of these organizations have partnered for uh, launching the third phase of the Baroda Jandhan Plus program, okay? In 25 districts of Uttar Pradesh and 13 districts of Uttarakhand. Basically, through this program, they are targeting at the financial and economic empowerment of women by including them into the banking, uh, we can say arena, or by uh, including them, them into the financial sector, by helping them opening their bank accounts. Okay? This Women's World Banking is a global non-profit organization headquartered in US that basically aims to empower the women financially and economically. Moving ahead, which of the following companies has received an in-principle approval to act as the payment aggregator? So here guys, you have the three options, Razorpay, Stripe, Pine Lab, A and B, A, B and C. So here the right answer is option E, A, B and C. All these three companies along with one pay. have got the permission or approval from RBI to act as the payment aggregator. Now what is it? First of all, let's understand the news. We have known the facts of the news. Now know what is a payment aggregator. Guys, you have Paytm. I hope any one of you must have Paytm, Google Pay or Amazon Pay. Uh, or you may have phone pay, okay? Some of these. So these are what? These are your payment gateways, the individual payment gateways, okay? First of all, the payment aggregators would not have any benefit for the customers. We as a customer, we shop on the e-commerce website. We don't uh, get any kind of benefit from these payment aggregators, unlike the account aggregators who used to gather the financial information from us. We are not talking about them. We are talking about the payment aggregators who are basically going to deal with the e-commerce websites or the merchants, okay? So it is going to provide the benefit to the merchants or the e-commerce website. And how are they going to do that? This is what I'm telling you. So these are the payment gateways, okay? Now let's take the example of Amazon. You must have shopped something from Amazon once in your lifetime, right? Then when you purchase the product, you see a payment gateway or payment page where you are given different options to pay through. Okay, so you have many options. Now suppose if the payment page starts showing you all these 
options and the payment page is uh, you can say filled with so many options then what will happen it will create a confusion and at the same time it will also lead to website malfunctioning for the e-commerce website therefore in order to reduce this kind of risk payment ag aggregators have come forward now who are the payment aggregators they are basically the websites for example let's say razorpay so it is basically a website a platform that will partner with all of these organizations and provide an integrated uh, we can say platform so payment solution to the merchant okay so whenever you go to the amazon website suppose it has partnered with razor pay and you are given the option of razor pay once you click on the razor pay you will get the option of paying from each of the from any of these options okay so it will help the e-commerce website let's say amazon first of all in preventing its page from crumbling and secondly in individually partnering with all these payment gateways if this was not there the amazon website had to partner with all these organizations payment gateways individually now this need has been eliminated by payment aggregator so that is the basic difference between a gateway and an aggregator i hope that it is now easy to understand and if there is something you are not able to understand please mention it in the comment section okay so i have on only explained it in words here you can read it on your own okay so this is about the payment aggregators guidelines that were issued by rbi in 2020 according to the guidelines payment aggregators need to have a net worth of 15 crore as on march 2021 and a net worth of 25 crore by on or before 2023 and they have to maintain a net worth of 25 crore at all times thereafter and these limits are guys very important for all of you do remember the limit moving ahead to the last question who has become the first woman to be featured on the wall of former chief e economist of imf so here the right answer is geeta gopinath so she has become the first female and second indian to feature on the wall of the chief economist of uh, imf and i hope all of you know that she is the first deputy managing director of imf okay so that is all the first person the first indian to feature on the wall was raghuram raja that is all about this news and now it's the end of today's video i hope that you have enjoyed the video you have understood the concepts if there is anything you are not able to understand or if there is anything you share with me you can mention it in the comment section below thank you so much guys for watching the video